I think I just want to touch on one thing that I think you said um, at the start of this, and this is a it, it's an interesting concept because it's not something that you can't teach this. You can't teach this. It's part of I think development. It's also part of um, it's part of the relationship and the interaction between the two people who come together. Is it is your job as a coach to make them feel safe. And that's not, I'm not talking about like feel safe in the like woke way. It's not what I'm referring to at all. What I'm referring to is there is, there's individuals who will come across in your life and it's generally got to do with like a values base. And it's generally got to do with like the way that they, you know, uphold themselves and the way that they present themselves and the way that they action, the things that they do. But their way in which or their manner in which they will interact with you gives you a safe feeling. And that sounds woohoo and fucking, you know, crystals and all that shit. But we know it. We all know exactly what we're referring to. Like It's when you're around individuals and you know that you can just be like chilled. And you you know that you can, you know, trust and you can depend on these people. And that's that part of that safe feeling. This is why I'm such a big advocate for two things within the coaching realm. One, that f- initial interaction. It's not an intake form, and then from an intake form, you just get in a program, and then it's just kind of like it's a call, or it's a you know, it's a phone call, or a video call, or it's a physical interaction of like, hey, come down to the gym, let's have a chat, like we'll go through an assessment. It's, that initial interaction is about seeing if this works. If there's a relationship, a give and a take that can occur, it's like, especially, you know, especially in my realm, it's like, I, I know that I'm going to see, be with this person for a long time. It's like, I need to like you, to be honest. And that sounds so bad. It's like, I need you to stimulate me in some way. I need you to excite me about the goal that you want to achieve. I need you to excite me in terms of like a challenge or something that's wrong or something that I need to overcome. Like I need a problem. It's like, and I need you to be a good person. Because if you're not, it's like, I don't want to work with you because that's not an interaction that I want to work with. That's not a safe environment where we can give and take and I can lead you, lead and guide you on the journey and mold. And you were talking about like this changing of the person. It's funny how we don't want to change an individual. That's not what I'm trying to do at all. But what I am doing is I'm helping you mold the structure that you are. It's like, I, I learn your personalities. I learn your quirks. Like you said, I learn the, like, dude, I learn about their, you know, their, their family members. I learn about the things going on in their lives. I learn about their pets. Their pets is the easiest one. Easiest one. Just animals are so much better than humans, but just learn about their pets. And it's like, and now you have like a rapport that you can continuously work upon from there. It's like, now you can help mold this individual with their personality and what you're trying to achieve to get them towards their goal. And it's, that's, that's the environment that is trust. That is the environment that creates safety. That is the environment that, and why that is so important. And this all sounds like great until it doesn't. And then so like, you'll be like, okay, but why is it important? It's important because when the shit hits the fan, cause it's gonna, and this is, this is why this is the most important part. Because when the shit hits the fan and you as a coach need to make a decision that is going to change the directory of the shit hitting the fan, the client is going to turn around and be like, I trust you wholeheartedly because of every interaction and all of the past experiences and everything that we've built up and done over X amount of time. So there is, yep, cool, let's do it. That's it. That's the, that's you're literally building this rapport for one moment. And I say one moment because it will happen throughout your coaching journey with a client, but one moment that kind of happens of where you need to make a decision and the client goes, yep, I keep doing this or I'm on board or I, yes, let's do whatever X and Y and Z is. Or it's the continuation of like, I'm dropping your calories. It's like, ah, fuck. Like I was really looking forward to that burger on the weekend, but I trust there, like he knows what he's doing. I'm just going to continue with the process. I know what I'm doing. And it's like, and there's this trust that's there. Everything that you do is building up so that when you make your decisions upon 
the roadmap or the framework in which you are taking this client towards their goal. They trust you in what you are doing and getting them the best result. That's it. That's why you do it. Because if you don't have any of that backing, they are going to sit there and be like, is this the right decision? Is James doing the right thing? Like, I've seen so many other people do this, though. Like, I don't know. Maybe maybe he doesn't know what he's doing. That is, that's what you want to avoid. And they're not doing that because they question you. It's because you haven't instilled a, enough trust in what you are doing. That, that, uh, genuinely, uh, that's honestly what I believe nine out of ten times. You've either done one of two things. You have not built enough trust. Or you have not explained why you are doing X, Y, and Z, which comes back to the whole trust thing. The like explanation gives trust and gives authority from that. So it's it's essentially the same thing. They don't trust you in what you're doing. And there will come a time when that happens. And you will need to address it. And you'll be like, hey, Thea, all of these other times, have we been wrong? Have I taken you down the path? Have Has your trust in me, not fo- like you not following through on your trust and want to do, get, resulted in a bad bad solution no it hasn't all right so trust me with this it's like i've I've given you i've proven you i have the track record so we continue that and that only happens if you start and that starts from that that initial interaction that 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 call that seeing each other it's like when all of these things start combining and building together that is trust that is and that's like when you have a coach client relationship where they trust you, they question to learn, they question to understand, which I think is vitally important if you are a client of a coach and you don't question to understand and to be reassured, not as an arrogant dick, but to be reassured around like, and wanting to learn, your coach should be able to do that easily, very, very easily. So you've, you've got to, that, that whole relationship, when that builds up together, it's it's bound to be successful. It's, there's nothing that will stop that from being successful unless a compliance thing comes off the back end of that. But that's how this this whole kind of, I want to say like fucking Play-Doh ball of just like all these different colors of just like things come together in this coaching client relationship. It makes the biggest impact. If you can instill that trust, which is part of like reputation, which is part of the way you carry yourself, it's the things you do, it's the things you show up and do, it's the way that you hold yourself to a standard. Like all of these things come together, they build trust and reputation. And that's what will make you, it will make you a coach that is far more successful in the people business of coaching. And with that, you will gain results. And then again, results creates trust and it kind of just all continues to create the spiral effect of what happens. You bring up such a valuable point that having people understand, like understanding or recognizing the sign that one, if somebody's questioning something, it doesn't mean that they don't trust you. It means that they they generally want to know and it is part of your duty to... um, to be able to answer that, to be able to explain, to help kind of, again, get, build that bridge. Cause inevitably chaos is going to happen. And that's kind of, that can be several instances in your relationship with your client of, are we crossing this bridge together or separate? And whenever it is through separate means, like there is, there's a lack of trust or a loss of trust. So being able to recognize one, are you upholding that value and being able to explain to the individual to the level that they understand and they can put their trust in you, but also recognizing and auditing whenever you're going through, if the questions aren't questions of understanding if they're coming from a place of concern or um or you know just questioning because they're not seeing the results like that's on you to recognize of hey maybe i don't have this individual's trust because how these questions are coming up because it's not wanting to learn or wanting to better understand it's hey i don't think this is working are you sure we should be doing this are you 
sure because I don't think this is going to work for me. They're very different places where they come up. And in an audit sense for a coach, it's important to recognize that and start addressing it. So, so you can act in good faith with that individual. So they are willing to kind of, they're willing to put it in you and kind of follow the path that they need to see success. But there is going, there needs to be that trust developed for that to happen. Otherwise, as a coach, you're always going to kind of be fighting against it. Um, and if it's not addressed, it that dynamic's never going to change. And I like the fact that um, kind of using that example of the Play-Doh of the mold, that it's up to the coach to like understand first off, hey, is this going to be a good dynamic initially or is this going to be a fight the whole time? Like, is there a potential for this to work or are you setting yourself up for failure off the get go because you don't have similar values because, um, you know, you're just not going to mesh in that dynamic. And then yeah. again, being able to like in molding an individual, like understanding how you mold that individual is you as a coach, you're adjusting and adapting to your client to, Hey, what mold do they need? It's not, you know, every, trying to put every square in a round hole. It's like, Hey, let's find the shapes that work together. The approaches that get the results, the, you know, the validations, if one individual needs can those validations, because you understand, Hey, this is the concern that they have. Let me, let me help remind them we've been successful this time, this time, like you've trusted me before we've got these results. Don't lose sight of that or maintain that faith that we've developed so we can work through this together. Whereas another person might need a different approach, but as a coach, it's up to you, up to you to understand how we mold this individual into the shape. That's going to, again, get the results that they've come to you for that. They put that trust into you with is you being able to articulate to them, you being able to, be dynamic enough that you're adjustable to the different people that you train and that you work with. And you're not, you know, just a one note coach that, Hey, this is like, I only do this one thing and I can't adapt because it's very short sighted. It's very limited in being able to maintain those relationships long-term, but also it's very limiting in how you can get results for individuals. I know for a fact you as a coach, you have to coach different ways with different individuals to get those results. Even though, you know, you're going to use similar exercises, you're going to have a scheme that you're going to like initially incorporate, but how you put that into play, how you kind of, how you maneuver around the needs of those clients is going to change. And you're very versatile in your ability to, I create that experience for them and get the results or get individual results for them. I think, you know, to, to summarize it all and like, I'll go back to that Play-Doh analogy because I actually really liked it. It's the end of the day, this, this entire thing is going to look like, it's going to look like a, um, it's going to look like a sculpture that makes fuck all sense. To be 100% honest, it's going to look like a Jackson Pollock sculpture thing with like square eyes and like a, a foot for a hand. And like, it's just going to be a mess. But the whole idea behind this is every part of the different colors of the Play-Doh, all the little bits that come together that all match and, and mold and build the structure in front of you is all going to be the little experiences that your client will remember, for example, that then builds the trust or will be able to take that experience and add that to the, the sculpture that is this thing, this monstrosity that's in front of you, that is the client experience, that is the trust, that is the safe environment, that is the end result. Because at the end of the day, the, the name of the game of what we're trying to do is achieve a result, which is that as close to, as I say as close to the goal that the client has, because every client will have a goal, like something that they want. 
and you, it's your job, it's literally your job as the coach to get them as close to that as possible. 